Jesus knows you masturbate, and he sent Drake in an ark with a shower of poo. <laughs> <laughs> Hey and welcome to it, the 33% Majority, a talk show where you'll find three friends fighting for their 15 minutes of fame. I'm your actual host, Ashley Hall, uh, voiced by Troy McClure. I am Gavin Slater and I'm the official voice actor for the main host character of Alex Springthorpe. Uh, Alright guys, uh, I am uh, Craig Davidson and uh, I'll be the host, uh, Tom Hutchinson. Um, so, I'm just waiting at the moment, chaps, on my contract to be renegotiated, waiting on some paperwork, so I'm not, I'm not doing, like, the silly voice or, you know, playing that, you know, the, the character or anything of Alex Springthorpe. I'll be here for the recording, but I'm not. My lawyers have advised me not to actually play the part until the finer details have been finalised. I, I I don't mis- mean to uh, rub salt in the wound, uh, but my my contract got sorted about uh, four or five hours ago, so I'm going to oh, slip mate. into my my stage my stage persona now. If that's I, okay, I'm, I'm actually very method, so I never left character. I've been living with the, this girl uh, for three years, playing the character, <laughs> so I'll be committed. Uh, if that's okay, <laughs> with, you, with you fine gentlemen. That's. And that really is part of my issue with it, is that, you know, Ashley's a method actor, which just means he's better at playing Ashley Hall because he's Ashley Hall, um, whereas I'm just a little more responsive when it comes to my acting, so I am demanding a higher salary. Hang on, you guys are getting paid? Oh yeah, well I was, but not anywhere near the amount I wanted to be. That makes perfect, I feel for you. Hold on, I don't, I don't, I don't... I'd already, sorry, I'd already set myself up in the role. Hold on, let me just dip out of Tom for a minute. It's, it's difficult to think. as Dipping as, out as, of as, Tom as... is a hobby of mine. Mm. Um. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, to be fair, uh, the Screen Actors Guild, uh, that they they stipulate my pay, and I, I've, I've pre-agreed that with them, so it's it's all good. It's all good already. Oh, hang on, chap. Sally's coming. All right, Sally. Oh, have you got it? Oh, brilliant. Let me have a look. Flip through. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just sign. Make sure you, sign on that. Make sure, Alex. Make make sure you read page six, mate. Oh, is that the one about the green M and M's? That's the one, green, mate. Green M and M's up the nose. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, cool. No, I'm happy. Hi guys, it's Alex Springthorpe. I'm back, ready for another episode of the Thirty Three Percent Majority. No, I'm the host, Tom Hutchinson, and I'm ready for another episode of the Thirty Three Percent Majority. Actually. I'll be the host, um, Ashley Hall, who never left, really, in your hearts. <laughs> Ashley, are you ready for another episode of the 33% majority? I can't say it one more time. 33% majority, anyone? <laughs> okay, cool. That, w- that was supposed to be comedy, guys. That was supposed to be comedy, we hope. Um, just before we kick off, guys, I just wanted to tell you guys and the listeners that we are we, we actually have our sort of first partnership, I guess. Um we're, we're married. Yeah, we got married to each other, everybody. I'm Tom and Ash's husband. That's the one. I'm a loving, caring housewife to both of these fine men. I'm the gardener in the tree. Tom's the Tom's the no Tom's the breadwinner. Ashley's the <laughs> housewife, and I'm just the hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm, okay. I'm just the typical house slut. You're the free use fantasy boy. <laughs> I'm, you know what, man? I thought it was just me to do about that, but I'm so glad it's not. Oh, I feel so much less alone now. <laughs> um, okay, so smutty comedy aside, um, we're actually partnered with um, Stripe Climate, and uh, what they do is uh, they're, they're currently using... Um, the money that we would get from any ad revenue once the the adverts start to appear on the show, which should be anytime soon, um, they'll be donating a portion of any of that money to basically fighting and trying to avert climate change, Whoa. which is prudent. No, Tom, you said it was... No, Tom, you said they supported climate change. No, supported the fight Fuck again. Fuck those sea turtles, Tom. For God's sake, Tom, <laughs> I... Oh. Tom, I disposed of so many car batteries in the ocean this morning. Well, no. Tom, I've no. been buying plastic straws and just putting them in my sink. I can't get you to the ocean. Def- I live landlocked, so. 
<laughs> Tom, I did okay, so well, many oil spills today. Okay, those are those are the those are the opposite. Oh, I really I really have got the wrong end of this stick. You really have, you really have. Anyway, I just wanted to to speak about that and mention that quickly and basically just to tell you guys and the listeners that genuinely listening to the 33% majority helps save the world. So you need to tell your friends, you need to post about it on Instagram, that our podcast is going to save the planet. And just okay? by, so, you know, if by orders of reduction, not listening to this podcast ruins the planet. And for every it, person that yeah. doesn't listen to this podcast, a sea turtle dies. And it's your fault. Exactly. <laughs> what you're doing by not listening <laughs> is basically you're kicking a baby seal to death. Yes, <laughs> you're exactly. bludgeoning endangered animals. <laughs> and for what? I've seen you sharpening your baseball bat, which is not something you do, but it's all I could think of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> driving nails through it on the way to work, you sick fucks. You're tipping tar on a metaphorical pelican. Do you really want to kill that <laughs> metaphorical pelican? No. Pelicans so listen assholes, to the though. podcast. I would, I would fucking, I would handy fit, handy cuff uh, a pelican. Fisty uh, cuff. Just a, just a, just a sort of side note parentheses. The thirty three percent majority is not an anti pelican podcast. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, last episode we touched on the fact that Ashley and I were going on a beach trip on an employee's kind of vacation, sort of team building exercise. Uh, and that Thomas wasn't going to be coming just because he didn't fancy it. Um, no, I'd and- actually gotten a disciplinary from the from the guys upstairs. <laughs> Sally, <laughs> Sally, <laughs> Sally, Sally said I wasn't allowed to go on any of the um, on the, the employee the, the, retreat. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and Ashley, you were going to tell us what you thought of the uh, the micro. It's the most incredible vehicle I've ever been in. Um, Do you actually it like is- it? I love it. Like I'm actually desperately in love with it. It's a complete bag of shit, and it's frightening yeah. to be in anything above 30. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's got so much character. It's so lovable. Mm. Yeah, I've now outfitted it with a banging 2004 era uh, sound system, too, which you're yet to see, but that's exciting, too. Um, but my anecdote this week is, is from the beach trip, because um, I wanted to go in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, right. And I forgot, <laughs> I did forget that I'm not a seven-year-old anymore. So stripping off at the beach to get my <laughs> wanger out so I could hide it with like swimming trunks isn't allowed anymore. So I was just wearing like uh, grey jogger shorts, just relaxing mm-hmm. sofa wear. And I thought, fuck it, these are basically, that's basically all it is, isn't it? It's just short trousers that you don't mind getting wet. So I went into the sea with these on. It was perilously cold though. Um <laughs> So I got I got in to just above the knee, uh, probably halfway up my thigh. And bearing in mind, these are grey joggers. So you can cl- see, clearly see to which level I've been up to in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, and my body just had a, just a, a natural reaction. It was, well, you're in the sea. Guess what you can do in the, in the sea is you can do a piss. Oh, no. <laughs> so I stood and I was facing actually making eye contact with him, having a chat. And I just openly pissed myself. <laughs> In my shorts, but I hadn't I hadn't been up to the peepus level yet. That was still bone dry, so I just, just pissed myself in front of my friend. Great joggers on, and it's just like, oh, oh, oh you're really comfortable, huh? <laughs> I just did a real big mistake, dude. I'm stood like ten foot from this guy. <laughs> like, I'm within piss range. Yeah, so that's that's, that's yeah, my that's... anecdote of a. A piss mistake I did at the seaside. Grim and gross. Nasty. You nasty boy. Same mistake, like there wasn't eye contact. It was terrifying. Oh, you know, like when a dog mm. pisses on a lamppost and they watch you the whole time, like, this is mine. I can't go in the ocean now. It's Alex's. Yeah, it belongs to him. Is that my ocean? Do I own the ocean? Yeah, you're Poseidon now. I am father <laughs> of the ocean. Ocean daddy. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, good anecdote, Alex. I'm, I'm glad you told me about your piss catastrophe. You're welcome, mate. Anytime. <laughs> who's who's hosting? Uh, I think it might be me. I think I'm. I, ch- I challenge you to a host off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I don't actually challenge you to a host off. I would like to talk to you both about. So, me and Alex went on this drive, and on the way there, as me and Alex often do, we had a little bit of a chat about life. Um, mm-hmm. and I quoted some bullshit that I read somewhere, where I, and I said. It's better to be a, a soldier in a garden than a gardener in a war. 
and me and Alex were like, wow, that's so deep and profound. And it got me thinking Super about profound. how much wow. stupid did profound. It, did it get you thinking it's better to be a, a, guard, a, a soldier in a garden than a gardener in a soldier? I would love to be a gardener and a soldier. Me and that guy. I didn't realise we were allowed to let the gardener in us. I'll be right on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I'd have known that, I, would, I never would have bought the garden to begin with. I would have just gone to war and fucked, a, uh, fucked the gardener. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm a little bit lost in this one. But yeah, it got me thinking all about how like how much of our lives is just spent seeing stupid quotes on bathroom walls, or like you go into a restaurant mm-hmm. and it says like a tiger doesn't lose sleep over the opinion of sheep. <laughs> it's, like, oh it's like the idea of a self-conscious tiger gets me going like, mm. he does care he's he's just not telling you about it it does just scream a boomer quote though doesn't it yeah it uh, just feels it, as it feels like something that a 40 year old david would put in relation to an argument he had with another dad at a school it is those oddly specific shirts you know what i mean mm. My husband is an American welder, born in February, and I am his princess, and he will die for me! On a (laughs) t-shirt. And he will sacrifice a child every second Wednesday for me. Uh, Mm. (laughs) So I I got a collection of of some that I found found quite nice, Um, and then the more you think about them, the weirder they get. So in passing, it's like, oh, this is sweet, but then in reading, it's like, oh, that's weird. You actually think about it, and it's worse. Yeah, you okay. think about it and you're like, hang on a second. So, I'll give you an example. Uh, impossible is a word only to be found in the Dictionary of Fools. Uh, Napoleon said that. Napoleon was wrong. He is wrong. He's wrong. It's in Oxford's Dictionary. dictionary. That's not true. <laughs> That's in my good friend, Ms. Marion Webster's Dictionary, too. Mm. Marion Webster's. Listen, if you're not, how, how could you even bring Marion Webster into this? Also, I'm really sorry, but, like, Napoleon, wasn't he, like historically speaking quite bad at what he did for a living. <laughs> no he did a really good job of ice cream well, yeah okay for fuck's sake no that's <laughs> neapolitan you bellend well, whoever did that did a fucking good job too <laughs> all right okay his second name was bonaparte so he had to be he had to be famous you can't have the second name bonaparte and not, and See, not do you know, be famous do you know what this is the thing, though. It's always the people with, like, the strangest names that get the furthest in life. And I actually think it's because, like, it sort of numbs them to, like, external, like, criticism. Because I'm sure, <laughs> like, Napoleon Bonaparte got so much shit when he was in school, but he's, like, battle-hardened to it to the point mm. where, like, you know, he's trying to rise through the ranks or whatever in, like, the French fucking revolution or whatever he did there. All celebrities have got, like, interesting names. Once they made it up, Will I Am, or the their real oh. names. I don't know why Is Will I Am a... was the first famous person to come to my head. <laughs> <laughs> Just a huge Black Eyed Peas fan, guys. <laughs> Ooh, they just came out of nowhere. They did a song, and the the lyrics of the song literally say, "Let's get retarded." I don't think that's a good that's a good lyric. Give it context, Al- uh, Tom. They were saying, "Let's get retarded" in here. Like, yes. Give it context. It's less uh, bad oh, okay. now that you know it's it's localized to their room. <laughs> it's location based. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's bit... it's still bad. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to think time context. Yeah. Okay. You know that was at a yeah. time where it was still a bad word, but you know, kind of edgy to say it, and now it's bad. Anyway, so Ash, I, we've derailed. We've derailed it. Gone straight onto the black eyed peas being problematic. <laughs> you leave my hero okay. while I am alone. <laughs> Go for it, buddy. Carry on. You do you. Uh, so I'd like to offer you another one. Uh, God never ends anything on a negative. God always ends on a positive. Um, I'd like to refer you to death. Goodbye, dead baby. <laughs> Goodbye, dead baby. What a positive <laughs> thing that's happening now. Good job, God. Classic God manoeuvre. He's out here balling. Mm. And everybody knows that when he when he flooded your flat with poo... When God flooded your your flat with poo and sent Noah with an ark. Tom, it was God's plan, all right? <laughs> he knew what was coming. It was because of your sin. That's a Drake song, God's plan. I like that one. Jesus knows you masturbate and he sent Drake in an ark with a shower of poo. <laughs> 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 I think that that's what it is. Listen, Jesus knows you touch yourself at night and as a result, it's shitty Drake music slash ark. <laughs> Uh, do you know what, Ash? It's always it's it all, all, always terribly impresses me the fact that you managed to bang out the intro clip within like you know 
10, 15 minutes of us actually recording. So well fucking done on that front. Oh, I sit in the mirror and practice these punchlines. Yeah, you just you, yeah. you bang it out so Did quick. Did I listen to the one where the intro clip was, was you going, uh, Alex, you're built like, uh, you look like you swallowed a tyre. And I was at work and I've heard <laughs> that line like eight times now, but it still fucking destroyed me. <laughs> It just catches you off guard, doesn't it? it dude, it, I knew it was, it was a there. Like, it was the intro clip, and it happened like 20 minutes later. I was like, no, that's still fucking funny. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, this one's by Albert Einstein. You might know him from uh, Trolls. <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, a ship is always safe ashore, but that is not what it's built for. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that one's pretty good. It's not, though, because a a tornado has happened before, Albie. Mm. Uh, So this one is speaking to, if you're in in your comfort zone, you know, nothing's going to happen to you. But, you you know, that's not what you're for. Go out, see the things, do the scary things and try some shit. And I think it's a beautiful sentiment. The thing is, though, that logic works worse the further back in time you go. So if you're a caveman and it's like, whoa, I gotta, I gotta be uncomfortable to make progress. So what you do is you leave your cave and get eaten by a tiger that you knew was out there because you were frightened of it. And the tiger was really self-conscious about the sheep nearby, uh, and it was no, it's terrible. It's a it's a good analogy. It's just not thought out through properly all the way. Because if a a metal shift is just left moored up in the in the harbour, over time it's going to rust. The water in the air it'll corrode and it'll rust and it'll fall mm. apart. But I think that speaks magnificently to people left idle will begin. You know their their brain functions will decay, and they will become rubbish idiots. Just rubbish, crap idiots. <laughs> no need to get personal. Dumbos. Come on now. I'm sat right here. Just sat watching ITV all day. I don't watch ITV. I'm not going to pay for a TV license. No, no, no. You don't. You, you don't need a TV license to watch catch up, but you do need it if you're going to watch the BBC live or on catch up. Oh, is it only live television? Yeah. American listeners, we have to have a license for a TV. You're allowed to watch TV. Uh, as long as you've got somebody that also, that does have a TV license and, and has held it for longer than three years and they can supervise you while you watch TV. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. Do you know what's really weird, though? What's really strange is that um, over the last few days, we've had like a sharp uptick in um, listeners from, from the US. And so I bet they are oh. super fucking confused at the moment about what a TV license well, is. Well, I've got my yes. kitchen knife license, which I use for butter knives. <laughs> I've got my I've got my TV license. Obviously, I can't operate a TV because it's electrical. It might hurt me. Um, I do have to call the police to come over and turn the laptop on because there is a small chance of it yep. electrocuting me. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you, there's lots yeah. of scary things on the internet. So I've got PC Inspector Dennis Walker with me here, making sure I don't look at any criminal things on the internet. Thanks, Dennis. No naughty pornies. <laughs> no, you're allowed to look at porn. It's just super uncomfortable because Dennis is watching. Just not naughty ones. Yes. <laughs> We're talking softcore. I'm going to move past Dennis watching porn with Alex and offer you both. <laughs> the best way out is always through. Nope. Nope. I've left it... a room by the door several times. <laughs> I don't need to go through the wall. Like, I don't need to... I mean, I'm I'm in my... Okay, break the illusion slightly. I'm not in the podcast recording studio today. I am off-site. I am working... I'm recording from home today and I'm in my office, which has got one door... We've just got one door and it's got one window. And if I wanted to leave and go through the window, I'd break my ankles. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but you could. I could do it. It's not the best way, though, is it? I'd like to rephrase it. The best way out is the way you came in. <laughs> <laughs> the best way out is to complete your task and retreat. Yes. Because then it keeps the sentiment as well. The, the best the best way out is to ascend to godhood and leave via the roof. <laughs> Mm. That's how I've been leaving my rooms for weeks now. Okay, it's okay. a powerful good, statement. Good work. At the end of it, at the end of a job interview, I just ascend through the roof. Good work, omniscient Ashy. Well done. Um, and, and then lastly, uh, there's two more after this, but the last one I don't think I can read because it makes me want to throw up. Uh, do or do not, there is no try. So that's Yoda, uh, who was a very wise man. Yeah, he did say that. He was dyslexic, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was the no, dyslexic no. gnome. <laughs> Dyslexic he was. He, yes. <laughs> dis, dis, 
<laughs> I love how many jokes there are about Yoda. Like, I love all the Yoda jokes. Do them but... all. Do them all right any... now. I actually. don't know any of them off my heart. I just think his but voice you is funny. just told me there were lots. <laughs> yeah, there are loads of Yoda jokes. Hang on a second and I'll pull some up, you fucking fuck. Yoda. Do you know them, though? Well, no, I don't, but my phone knows them. As far as I was aware, Ash, you were the resident Yoda joke expert, so you're really letting the side down right That's now. That's true. I have got that tattooed on my face. Uh, listen here. Ashley Yoderman. <laughs> Oh, these are all terrible. These are all Go awful. On. There's Do loads it. of Yoda jokes. Really shit ones, though. Loads of really <laughs> shit Not Yoda good. jokes available. Uh, why was Yoda hired at the greenhouse? I don't know. Because he had green fingers. Right. Right. Uh, right. How uh, bad is that? Because that could be about the Grinch. It could be about anybody with green fingers. The Hulk. If you Googled the Hulk... The Hulk the Hulk gardening joke. It would bring that one up. It's just a reason. It would be the same joke. <laughs> Green-based jokes, please, Google. <laughs> oh, no, I actually have a Google in my house. He's listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was the oldest man thing I've ever heard you say. I have a Google in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got one of them. She's always listening. She never oh, stops. It, it's been a while since we've done this. Hey, Google, play the 33% majority. Fuck you guys. Wait, no. No, that doesn't... Hang on. No wait, any no. That was supposed to be for our listeners, but they to for me to have said that command, for me to have said that, they would have had to already be playing. That was the worst hack anyone's ever done. They could be at somebody else's house. It's probably worse. You've probably just ruined this podcast for them because they're now on for episode one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, come back quickly. <laughs> Don't listen to episode one. Whatever you do, <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> Ash, do the do the worst one. Do the last one. Oh, but they're also fucking right. Okay, knock knock. Who's there? Yoda. Yoda who? <sighs> it just says Yoda's such a good kid, but it doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I wasn't. I was. Re- I really was expecting a really profound. Yeah, I thought. Oh, no, I have. I have one last thing to read. I ex- so I explained um, that I I basically went looking for I- inspirational things and I found one that I don't think it's meant to be inspirational but it just says fellas if your girl has highlights wears chunky jewelry and likes to rollerblade mm. that's not your girl that's Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I don't understand it either. Oh, but and sorry, oh. Ashley, who who said that one? Uh, I think that was Sun Tzu in the art, the Sun Tzu in the Art of War. Ah. <laughs> okay. It was Knuckles. Knuckles said it. Knuckles looks like he fucks. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, to just to round off, then um, I just want to say to all of our all of our lovely listeners, if you've got if you need one mantra to live your life by, it's live, laugh, and love. Oh, true. Okay. I, yeah. Just just finally, just to overrun on Ashley's segment slightly, do either of you actually have anything that you do strongly believe in? Because I do. Well, one thing I always say is if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And I just try and apply that to a lot of things. I, yeah. That's why this podcast sounds the way it does, because it's not really worth it, so I don't bother. <laughs> well, I... Uh, <laughs> I've had um I've had a, a motto in my in my Twitter bio f- I think since I had Twitter and I think it's still really important you know in my life which is to say that there's three things that are important to me that's skating hating and respirating <laughs> I love You're an that idiot. For me. Uh, mine is is something Tom said, where it's be the adult you needed as a child, which I'm still I still think that's one of the oh, nicest oh, things. That is like, sweet. That is I sweet. like that. That is a nice one. I got really nice for a minute there. How do we dirty it up again? Sorry, I piss, shitted, and farted. It's about to get more pissy, shitty, and farty because Tom's because... Hat flat has just just been. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> Welcome everybody to our regular segment between segments, Urban. What the frick, Shinery? Beautiful and stanky. God, the stink is forever. That goes on forever. I'm never gonna get that one out of the curtains, Tom. Oh, Tom, set that to a hot wash. <laughs> <laughs> For any new listeners, um, th- this is a segment between segments where we take random urban dictionary entries and just try and figure out what the frick they mean, right? Right. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, Thomas. That's the sure. one it is. Tom, we all agree. It's right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> cool. An amicable podcast. <laughs> We're all here just to make so, friends, am I right? <laughs> just severely polite. Okay, first one of the day. Uh huh. It's. Are you ready? Yep. Beef walk. <laughs> beef walk. <laughs> That's beef, like the the meat, a joint of beef. That's and what walk. I do when I go to the when I go to the uh, Sainsbury's. Like I do the beef walk. When I put when you're the, off to Sainos, you're doing the beef walk, right? Gotcha. Yeah, when I put the steak down my trousers, so I'd have to pay for it. Yes, crime. Okay, I'm gonna. Am I right? Am I in a safe space right now? Is it just me and my two friends right now? I feel like you are. Mm-hmm. Only us. We'll mute this part of the podcast so the listeners can't hear it. So go ahead, buddy. Is it likely to be labial in nature? Oh. 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 Again, with the great vaginal descripting words, though. Uh, labial. <laughs> descripting? Oh, fucking. It's, it's a des- Describing. Descriptive. Descriptive is a word. Not the one you said, but yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what did I say? Descripting. Am I, I feel like I need Descripting. Oh, describing. Yeah. That's not great. Yes, that is a good describatory word, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, is it, is it likely to be something, you know, of that genre? I hope not, because all vaginas are beautiful. Yep. Eve, even yours. As with all people... They, they they come in many varying... I come in many varying. Alex comes in oh, many no. varying. No, no. Okay, I think we just need to wrap this one up now. I think it's to do with maybe something being swollen in, um, you know, that region. In in which which flavour of person are we discussing currently, Thomas? Vagina Fe- Female. V- yes, a, 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 yes a, somebody, who, somebody who has a... Paginus. A, a, a labial person, if you will. Mm. Yes, I, I think it's something to do with enlar- an, an enlarged Pangea. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that where mankind came from? Pancetta. I think it's someone that's got a very big pancetta. Okay, Ash? Um, I, I know what I want to say and be right and win, but I'm going to say, is it when I'm shoplifting steaks and I'm leaving things <laughs> okay. and I've got to walk funny because I'm hiding all those steaks. I've seen you do it. You look like an old gunslinger. Alex dist- Alex distracts a security guard by taking down his trousers and showing them his um his beef walk. <laughs> yes, his public indecent beef walk. Um okay. <laughs> the definition of beef walk is mm-hmm. going outside or away from a group of people in order to fart with less consequence and more confidence. I hate that we can never find the happy medium. We're either way too wholesome or fucking disgusting. We can never get it in the middle anymore. Yeah. Mm. If you would like um, an example of how to use it in a, in a in a sentence or in a conversation. Person A. Hey, where did you just go? Person B. I had to go on a beef walk. Oh. Nando's for lunch gave me the piri piri farts. Yuck. Excellent. That's, that's the sentence I came here for. Yeah. Yucky, nasty. I'm now the host and I'm going to do it. I'm doing it now. I'm having a host time. Oh, he's, he's going to do it. Oh my God. Oh, fuck. For the first time, ladies and gentlemen, in 17 episodes of 33% Majority Podcasting, it's time for me to do a game. Oh, oh my Lord. God. It's my favourite uh, type uh, of game. Alex, just sidebar it's quickly. The type of get. Oh, C- oh, sorry. Ju- right, okay. Just, sorry, sorry, just just, just quickly. Can, can we just nip into the, the meeting room quickly? Yeah, of course. Here I come. Yeah. Just gotta, hang on, just gotta come down off the energy. I, sorry, I, I had my announcement voice on. I was very excited for my... No, go on, Tom. He was, I'm in ready. His, he was in his flow. Ash, sorry, sorry, mate. We'll be back with you in a second. Sorry, I'll just, I'll be really quick. Alex, um, you know, Alex, like, basically, the, the only thing that I bring to this fucking podcast is fucking games. So, uh-huh. like, what the fuck are you trying to do to me? Hmm? Uh, what I've done, Tom, is I've devised a game that is better than any game <laughs> you've ever done, played, or heard of. It's real unfair. Now, get, get out, get out of my meeting room. Get out! Get out of my office! Is it meeting with an E A? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> yes. We've come in here to fart. Here to fart. <laughs> <laughs> Beef walk on over to the meat room. Oh, anyway, it, I'm doing a game now, and it's the best type of game. It's the type of game with a layer, an element of trickery and sneakery. <laughs> <laughs> For I have tricked and I have sneaked, boys. And oh, I Lord. have approached your partners and I have quizzed them on themselves 
and I'm going to ask you two questions about your partners. And we're going to find out, how well do you know them then? And this game is called, well, how well do you know them then? Oh, Alex, why have you done that? Oh, it's a prank. It's a good prank joke. I'm a terrible Fuck. fucking partner. Jeez. shit a room. Good Fuck. game to play with everybody. Fun for all the family, but probably okay. not you two. Um, so nope. So I've asked, I've asked, uh, and Tom, I, I've, I've been asked. asking Natalie questions. Um, and Ash, I spoke to your partner, and she didn't want her full actual name to be on the podcast, so she will be known henceforth as the Bee's Knees. So I asked Natalie and the Bee's Knees these questions. Um, and we'll see how many you can get right. This is terrible. Fine. We'll start off with easy mode, shall we? I'm in the zone. Let's go. I asked Nat and the Bee's Knees, what is your favourite place? What's their favourite place, guys? Your significant others who you love so much in the world, where do they love to go? Charity shops. Um, I'm going to just... Amsterdam on a boat. I'm going to cut, cut, just get that, cut it, just quickly. Uh, it is a geographical location with an uppercase first letter. It is a place, not a charity oh, shop. Oh, no. Oh, Alex, what have you done? Okay, I think that... So this is this is really fucking difficult because, like, is is my answer, is the one for my partner, is that geographical as well? Or yep, is it both, like... I'll give you... It's easy mode. Yes, both of these are geographical locations. Okay, is my partner's favourite place to go Casper's Dessert Shop? That doesn't sound like a... Ge- when I say geographical, look at, I mean like town name. Name of place. You oh, find it on map. right. Berlin. Okay. And, uh, so or Amsterdam, that- but one of those two places. And, and Thomas, what's Natalie's best place? Best place, most favourite, wonderful place? Oh, it's... Like um, it, it's somewhere like the not not the Netherlands, but like it, it's like uh, German in nature. Uh-huh. Like, uh, uh-huh. uh, um, would you both be dating uh, German liking girls? Oh my god, it begins with like a B or a D. Yeah, go on, um, go on. <laughs> yeah. Br- uh, b- can I give Can I give my dears? Go on. Yeah, you yeah, can work like, together. Berlin, Denmark. Um, is it? No, no, no. Fucking B's and D's. The bee's knees. Deutschland. Deutschland. Bees. It's just Germany, but with a D. <laughs> that's, ge- that's, that's Germany. Um, oh, fuckaroo. Um, Bavaria. In your own time, guys. Whenever you're ready. Ding, dang, ding, dang, dong. Oh, fuck. You can- this is the easy round. This is the first question of the easy round. <laughs> I hope it doesn't start getting real personal, because, like, the bee's knees know some things about me, I'll tell you. I've got some weaknesses. I'm just... I'm just bad at geography, so if German and B and D can be enough, I, 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 I'm fucking kicking myself because I know she basically she went there when she was a child a lot. <laughs> so Tom, she's got your... stories about horses. <laughs> your final answer is somewhere in Germany, beginning with either B or D. Yes, a German place beginning with B or D. Yes, and uh, Ash, your your answer for the bee's knees is uh, Berlin. Yeah. Both cocked it. Oh, fuck. Nat really enjoys Chroma, <laughs> a beautiful <laughs> English seaside town on the East Coast. <laughs> fuck. And the Beast Knees likes Dublin. Oh, oh shit I would have got it. that as well. Round two of easy yeah. mode. Fuck. What, what are your partner's favourite foods? Oh, chilli con carne. Donuts. Oh, fuck. Well, there we go. Nailed it. Now that, that that one, you've both got a point each. Hey, woohoo! Tom, we have to draw, or we have to both lose like miserably. Like we can't. I don't want you to win. I don't want me to win. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The third and final round of easy mode. What are your partner's favourite colours? Orange. You, you're saying it at the same time. Who said what? I said yellow. Tom, Tom Hutchinson said orange. And you both soar up to two points each. Well oh, done. Woo-hoo! No hesitation. It's because it's because bees knees like sunflowers. They're a favourite. Hard mode, engage! Oh fuck. I'm hard mode. What was the name of their first pet? Are we data fishing? What was their mother's maiden name? <laughs> <laughs> what is their social security number? Tom, what was Natalie's first pet called? And Ashley, what was the bee's knees first pet called? Lucky the Duck, or Bruno. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Lucky the Duck, I think. Okay. Uh, Tommy? Oh, it's a... 
it's a dog and it's a girl and I can't. What was the what was the girl dog's name? That, yeah, that I, I yeah I sort of grasped. Tom, that that if you could question. just say now the name of the girl dog that it was, I think I think you could really clinch the answer here. Say that bitch's name. <laughs> hey Alex, can can you just send me it? Can you just text me no. the name? <laughs> I'll text you. No, sir. <laughs> Wait, I'm messaging Tom. Give me a sec. Oh, you can't. You cannot be in cahoots. Oh, I, know it. I know the answer. I'm going to tell him. Give me a sec. This is going to be great. Hang on. Okay, Ash put ass pug, ass and I don't pug. think that's no. the one. How did he know? <laughs> How did he know? Um, are you submitting an answer, Tom, or are you forfeiting this round? Oh, can I get the first letter? No. No. Fuck. Just say it. Like, just like as if as if you know the person that you've been in a relationship with, like for ages. Just, like, give the answer to the question. Like, you know it. <laughs> Jesse. Uh, so we went with uh, Jesse for Nat's first Lucky pet. Lucky the Duck. Lucky the Duck for the Bee's Knees. And both were wrong. Nat's first pet was called Hopscotch. What? And the Bee's Knees' first pet was called Jigglypuff. Oh, fucking Jigglypuff. Oh. What What flavour of aminal is Jigglypuff? I feel like it was one of her land snails. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Um, still, chaps, still just on two points uh, that you got. Just remind you in uh, during easy mode. This one should be pretty easy. Um, what is their go-to meal deal? Now, there is a time limit on this one, and it's quicker than whatever we did last time, because this will get boring to listen to. Okay, I've got mine. Done. Fire. Off the off the hip. Go on. What's Nat's go-to meal deal? Hoisin duck wrap. Yes. She's going to pick probably some form of hula hoop or fruit. And I think the drink is going to be some kind of, like, berry smoothie. Oh, you are two out of three with that one, Tommy boy. We've got a hoisin duck wrap, Pringles, and a berry smoothie. Okay, Pringles, like, yeah, she... I would say Pringles is, like, very variable. That That's, that's as often as a chicken satay or a, or a fruit bowl, so... <laughs> it's not the one you said, though. Um, Ashley, what does the bee's knees acquire for a meal deal snack oh bloody balls um <laughs> it depends what shop she's going to is this like the ideal like the perfect one what's the perfect one i said what's your perfect most favoritist meal deal so it's, it's, a, BL, it's a blt mm. an innocent smoothie oh. um and crisps wise quavers okay almost almost ash Got one of the three. <laughs> she enjoys a Mexican chicken wrap, a brownie, oh, and an innocent smoothie. Of course she does. Greg's. Oh. God fucking damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. Question number three. This one's really tricky. I did have to get help from this one. This was a multi-man operation. I had Beth, her apprentice. I had, obviously, Nat and the bee's knees helping. This is multi-layered here. What brand of shampoo slash conditioner do they use? You see it every day, chaps. Every single day in your little scrub boxes where you go to acquire cleanliness. Why is it? Why is Hang it? Hang on one second. There? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't count. You can't. Uh, you won't get any points. You won't. It won't happen. Uh, I'm back. I don't know. I'm in the other room. Hang on. <laughs> Ashley's away from his microphone, but we can still hear him and he's actively cheating. And Tom's been quiet for too long now, so I'm distrustful. <laughs> Tom, Tom's taking his mic with him like a sneaky cunt. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. Um, it's blue. Dabba dee dabba da. It's expensive. It's got a gold top to it. And I know that the ingredients are like argan oil or something. <laughs> but I don't know what the brand is. I have no clue what the brand is. I don't know the brand either. No idea. So you've got no idea. Ash, have you got no idea? Not a fucking clue. So Nat uses OGX, who knew that even existed, and uh, the Bee's Knees has several, I literally use anything, so we won't get that, but if I had to say any, it'd be Tresemme. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. Like, oh fuck, the Bee's Knees, blur that out please. Blur, I'll blur that out on the podcast, yeah, no worries mate, I'll blur it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Visual effect that, guys, if you just cross your eyes when you hear that. For the <laughs> <laughs> if you could just squint a bit as you hear that. Guys, we cool. really need to speed run this now because I've got like three minutes left. Go, on, go. No, we. This is great. I love this. What are Nat and the Bee's knees? Is is pet peeve slash gives them the ick. Oh, I know this one. one Fucking so. Basically, when I'm doing a poopus, um, 
I like leave the toilet roll off the toilet roll holder and she fucking hates it. Oh, I do so many things to wind the bee's knees up. There's so many things. It's not specifically about you. It's just in general. G- generic pet peeves. Slash icks. Oh, generic pet peeves. Chuginess. Did did the bee's knees say chuginess? Say what? Chuginess. I don't know what the fuck that word is. Chuggy is kids slang or teen slang for stuff being like cringeworthy but in like a really nondescript way. So like your nan calling the corner shop a naughty thing. Oh, okay. Could be chuggy. Or like oh. you know when you go into like a new build house and they've got like glitter fronted TV unit and glitter fronted kitchen units and you think, Jesus, that's tacky. Chuggy. Chuggy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um Right, I learned something, uh, but you've evidenced that you guys haven't over your long and extensive relationships. Natalie's pet peeve is, firstly, Tom getting all of these wrong, slash bad grammar. Oh, well, oh, yeah, okay, that's probably the biggest one. Mm. And the bee's knees simply doesn't like creepy men. Oh, but she's she's been fucking dating one for nearly four years. <laughs> <laughs> How was I going to get that? I wasn't going to say me, was I? Number five, what's their go-to online clothes shop? What's the fucking one called where it's it's second at deep up? And Tom? Sheen? Huh? Ooh, fast fashion. That's naughty. She, sh- she, sh- no, I don't know. It, it's got, maybe it's got, begins with an M or something. There is a Sheen that you shop online for. No, she, I don't think it is that one. It's not Primark. Primark isn't online. Is it ASOS? No, it's not ASOS, no. Massmurderersonline.com. That's the one. Yep, I'll go with that. No, it it was misguided. Misguides? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick p- reprieve just to tally up the scores here. Was mine, whoa, was mine deep up? Did I get that right? You did, Ashley. You won. You won that round. Ah, oh, you fucking know, baby. I'm so smart and sexy and handsome. Oh, guys, Ooh. it's four for four. Oh shit, oh. tiebreaker round. Well, no, I've still got loads of questions. I could do this for another hour. Uh, <laughs> number six, if applicable, any food allergies from either of them? No, zero. Zero allergies. You win this round. That was a quick one, boys. No food allergies for either of them. I've tried everything, but nothing kills her. Great. <laughs> <laughs> number seven of hard mode. The final question for hard mode. Tom, what's Nat's favourite thing about you and Ash? What's the bee's knees favourite thing about you? Fuck. It's either going to be... Well, this is going to... Oh, go on, you, Tom. No, I was just going to say, this is going to make me cry when I hear it, probably. <laughs> um, is it... The only thing I can remember her saying to like to me of note would be that like when we got together, she liked my teeth. Okay. So, that's one, maybe. I don't know. Is that your final answer, or are you still thinking? No, I'm going to go with teeth. Teeth, okay. I respect that. Good teeth are important. Um, mine's probably going to be either my butt or the fact that I just know loads of stuff, but I'm, I'm going to go with my butt. Oh, well, you fucked it. The final hurdle there. Uh, Thomas, Nat's favourite thing about you is your taste in films and music and also hefty todger. <laughs> <laughs> hefty todger. And Ashley, the bee's knees nice favourite thing about you is your intelligence. Oh, God damn it. But you went with... You went with your juicy cheeks right at the end there. Well, that's she. The, she only ever compliments my ass or my intelligence, and I was like, "Is she going to tell Alex <laughs> that she <laughs> thinks I'm smart? Probably not." Insanity mode. Oh fuck! How many Facebook friends have they got? Fifteen hundred. Uh, fucking so much less than that. Like fucking. Oh jeez, like. Oh, it's got to be like it can't be a lot. Uh, Hundred and twenty. I'm giving it to Ash. Nat has got 915 Facebook friends. Uh, the Bees Knees has 168. So Ash was oh. Ash was definitely closest. There. Ash, you win. You're the better boyfriend. Uh, it's, well, that's that's the facts. Six to five. Second question of insanity mode, and there's only one more after this. Don't worry. I asked the your your lady friends, not including insert boy name here. Who is your favourite host of the 33 percent majority? Alex. Oh, yeah, Alex. Okay, that's a tie then. Just pull that <laughs> it wasn't going to be me, was it? Everybody loves me. Um, so uh, Nat said, I like you all equally. Not a lot, but still equally. Oh, I won. Mm. Um, and uh, the bee's knees said me. Um, all right. Insert bee's knees' name here. Thanks. 
How did I lose to you? Huh? That's why, Tom. She knows you don't know her name. I, I do. Know, I do know her name. <laughs> um, it, it's it's not for the victory or anything, but I have a final question here. Um, Fine. Just for fun, yeah. um, boys, can you tell me your partner's most recent bank transaction? Yep. Um. Uh, fucking good to go boxes. It's a good to go box. Uh, you go and get like local bakeries or whatever. When they have stock, they don't sell. Uh, we buy them, so we go and buy that, and then that, that goes into our food cupboards, so we don't waste food that much. That's a pretty wholesome thing. It's not that, though. Yeah. I need to know the time frame. I need to know when this was, because... Friday lunchtime. Oh, Friday lunchtime. Oh, fuck. Um, fucking... Sending mon- it would have been sending money to me. <laughs> Charity shops. Charity shops on Friday. Natalie sent money to Tom. Lol. Um... And the bee's knees paid for an expensive car repair. Oh, um, so at the end of that round, boys, uh, that is the conclusion to my game. Well, how well do you know him then? Uh, and Ashley <laughs> knows him pretty ding dang well with seven of ten questions done correctly. Was it 13? It was some questions and he got seven of them correct. And Thomas, you got him. a piss poor six. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I won. Well, I hate myself now. You should. Congratulations, Ashley, for being a better boyfriend. Yeah, um, pretty really much. proud of you. I just, I just needed to say though, the f- the frictionator is gonna overheat real bad. Yeah, if we I really. Gone. I went into overtime that that segment. I'm gonna need to only have like a five minute segment next week. <laughs> don't know. You don't get to do a five minute segment. That's almost a treat. <laughs> 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 That's a reward. <laughs> Welcome back to our regular segment between segments, Urban. What the frick, Shinery? God, he's going for it. Yep, put all the stank on that one. Uh, welcome back. The second word of the day is Dirk, and that's D-U-R-K. I went to school with Dirk. He wasn't a very smart man. Just sound, sounds like that kind of person, doesn't Dirk. it? Just, ugh. Is it what you when you when you really upset and you want to call someone a dick, but you're like about to sob, and you know when you're like you're really upset and you want to have the last word, you you fucking dick, dick. Yeah, okay. It's when you're trying to get your friend Derek's attention in a hurry. <laughs> you shorten it. Come on, dick. Um, it's a posh duck. Oh, oh it's a very posh duck. Oh, yeah, darling. Let's go and feed the ducks. Come, come, Nelson. Let us feed the ducks. Hmm. You remember that segment you did, Alex, on new swear words? I wonder whether somebody coined it really soon after our episode because of our international fame. Maybe. Is it? Is it what? Because I think, was that, was that, did we say something similar to that? I don't think so. Did we go with Dirk? Dirk does sound a bit scathing. Yeah, no, you want to steer clear of him. He's a proper Dirk. He's a Dirk head, in fact. Yeah, it does sound like that. It sounds like someone intellectually challenged. Sounds like a thicko. I think that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like like a noise that you would make to imitate somebody who's who, who's unintelligent. Dirk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think it's a name for someone who's less than we are. Okay, right. Oof. That sounds super elitist. I love it. Yes, it does. Uh, Shall we find out? Yes, please. Tell us your secrets, Daddy. Neanderthal patriarch responsible for the great 20,000 BC fire party. Having discovered wine and fire in close proximity, Dirk threw one hellacious, rooting, tooting, wild cave party Mm -hmm. that three quarters of the known world attended. It was a cave orgy of epic proportion, (laughs) woolly mammoth cookouts, and rock and rolling were just a few were just a few of the festivities. Mm -hmm. Dirk would be immortalized in many cave paintings around Western and Central Europe, many thought to be pornographic in nature. Can you imagine though? If either one of us had just got that fucking bang on. Yeah. If we just full on fucking nailed it. Yeah, it was impossible. We weren't far off though. That w- yeah. Essentially, it just sounds like the best idiot. No, the best idiot's Alex. Yeah, yes. no, that's very true. Thanks. Oh, oh, I didn't want to say that Tom was the best idiot. Tom's the best, but he's not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either of the two things you just said are true. Self hates the worst hate. That was Gandhi, by the way. Self... <laughs> Self-deprecation is the route to self-enlightenment. Thanks, Buddha. Yep. I'm a host now, so I- I've sprinkled throughout the show that I've had a couple of meetings with with the fellas upstairs. 
God, yeah. No, the owners of the big business corporation that is the 33 Incorporated. Oh, yeah. Um, the 33% conglomerate. Yeah, they've not been best pleased with me recently. Um, I wasn't allowed to go on the retreat. There have been problems about my performance and not meeting KPIs. I've had to pick up some more responsibilities in terms of editing. So I feel as though, you know, there's some trust coming back. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, one thing that they did say to me, which was really nice. Um, Steve actually said that uh, you guys have, Steve's been down to meet you guys, right? No, I've not met Steve yet. Is he the new guy in HR or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He's fucking scary. Um, Is he hot? Oh, the little remember, bold guy. Always... Little, little bold guy That's that rides a scooter. That gimp. He's not scathing. He's right? not scary. I could beat him in a fight. Okay, I could beat him in a scoot off. Uh, no, Steve, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't. I was listening. No, Steve, not like this. I just remember everybody, by the way, HR is the business's friend, not your friend. <laughs> in my meeting with them, where we discussed various aspects of my current performance, they said that they were actually quite happy with the games I was bringing to the shows, um, which is why I'm sort of quite concerned at the fact that they, for some reason, authorised Alex to do one. But anyway, <laughs> the problem that they had was that most of my games have names um, and one that they they haven't seen for a while and they wanted me to, to do again was the one where where we basically just take the piss out of horror stories ah it has been a while yeah they wanted us to have basically just a a five minute brainstorming session trying to come up with a name for it and then they don't they didn't want me to waste too much time and actually still do some so can we come up with a name for my horror time story campfire segment yeah it's the horror time scary campfire segment obviously (laughs) no no it's gotta be repeatable um tommy's cuddly teddy bear time oh i'm here for that something with a bit a misdirect in it a misdirect right okay Tom, bath time with Tommy. I'm here for bath time with Tommy. I've already got bath my fucking time. nudes on, baby. Ash, we do that every week anyway, so don't worry about that. Um, oh, thank God. I thought this would be encroaching on that time and I got really upset. No, no, no. We, you'll still get your bath time with Tommy. Um, um, I like rhyming, but I also like, you know, urban what the frictionary is like. To play on the, words. The sort of temp pole, it's there. Yeah. Why don't we call it something terrifying, like... Uh, spooky showdown. Uh, why we could? Why don't you say that it? Uh, right, guys, it's time for a spook 'em up. Oh yeah, like a beat 'em up, but with spooks. Okay, time for a spook 'em up. What do we think to that? Is that a contender or? Yeah, uh, that's getting there. But also, you know, as with the the naming convention of the shows that has a bit of alliteration, I feel like there needs to be another S word in the title. Shit. So uh-huh. I like spook 'em up, but there's got to be something else. Shit, spook 'em up. It's time for a spectral spook 'em up. Scary spook 'em up. That, that's uh, just somewhat redundant by spook 'em up, I think. A spooky spooky spook 'em up. That's three spur. <laughs> that's alliteration. It's time to spook 'em up till the poo come out. <laughs> <laughs> Syllabalistic alliteration. Is that something? Mm, I think not. That's not anything. Okay. Um, why don't we just call it David, which I think is a nice name. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> David's frightening. Ooh, spooky mm. David. Ooh. I like that. It's time for a spooky David. Time for a spooky David. We're going to have a spooky David, guys. Tom, I'm ready for a spooky David now, please. Okay, do you know what? Actually, I quite like it. Tom, we've already decided spooky David's coming. Uh, make room. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's time for everybody's favourite recurring segment, Spooky David. <laughs> And then I'll have that sound that. effect in. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. We'll just call them Spooky Davids then. I've got some Spooky Davids today. Do you guys want to hear my Spooky Davids? I'd really like to hear you Spooky Davids, please, Tom. Cool. Um, I'm actually concerned now because I didn't listen back to the previous episode, so I hope I'm not repeating. Have we had this one before? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, everybody. We'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah, I've been your host, Tom. Um, I've been your host, Spooky David. (laughs) You cock. There was a picture of me sleeping on my phone. I live alone. That selfie stick's really paying for itself, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, I really forgot I invested in Ring Indoor Security System. This week's episode sponsored by Ring. Maybe it's just a really intrusive sleeping app yeah, yeah, where you, you set it up to like 
check up on your sleepwalking and sleep talking. <laughs> you know the ones that record you when you're talking the night and then you've just got a recording of you on your phone saying, no, Oh, no, I've got one of those built into my house. It's called My Wife. And any time I do any particularly bad snoring, she records it and sends me it so I can review it in the morning and make the necessary apologies for the crimes I committed in the night. It's wonderful, but I don't think you can have an app called My Wife because everyone would just pronounce it like Borat. My, my Wife! wife. Which is the peak of 2009 <laughs> comedy. Very <Then> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even funny, I hate it. Do you know what's fucking horrible? That actually this episode has devolved so f- so so terribly that we're actually using Borat humour. No, it means it's good. That's good. Oh. It, when it is... When, the thing about podcasting to remember is bad is good. Huh. If it feels like a yucky episode, it means it's a yummy episode. That's... That's pretty much true. Give the listeners what they want. And all they want is another Spooky David, because we've debunked that one. <laughs> uh, there's another Spooky David coming up. Uh, this this one, I just don't understand. It's in Spanish. <laughs> Cock. <laughs> Tom, you've got to read it in Spanish now. <laughs> you've got to put it in Google Translate what's, and read it in Spanish. What's Spanish for David? El David. <sighs> Hola. Como estas? Spooky El David. Soy Thomas. No, soy Spooky David. Soy Spooky David. Anyway, right, fuck it. This one, yeah, I don't understand it, so you guys are probably going to need to explain it to me because I don't don't fucking get it. It says, I finally found my wife the kidney she needed. Oh, I've lost Tom again. His wife's never going to get that kidney. This is the spookiest of Spooky David that Tom just evaporated halfway through. Speaking. It was so sp- Spooky <laughs> David has taken over Tom's podcast. He found he found his wife <laughs> the kidney she needed, and it was Tom's corporeal form. <laughs> He's found the kidney. Tom's been kid- kidney napped. I'm back. <laughs> Kid- Tom. Kidney napped is a fucking great joke. I've been, I've been kidney napped. Oh no. <laughs> Tom, can we have that Spooky David again, please, from the top? Sure. I finally found my wife the kidney she needed. It took forever to track down everyone she donated organs to after the crash. Oh. Oh, he's he rebuilding knows. his wife. He's he's reassembling his wife. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I get it. I get it. Right, okay, so he wants to do a Frankenstein to her. It's Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein was the doctor? (laughs) Oh, yeah, Frankenstein. You know when you've reassembled your wife after a horrific accident and you've still got loads of nuts and bolts left over afterwards, what do you do with them? That's fucking scary. I always put them in a drawer. Hide them under something. We've got a drawer full of spare nuts and bolts from all the times the bee's knees has fallen off climbing walls. (laughs) (laughs) It's time for another Spooky David. Your, your two's evil laughs are great. My laugh sounds like someone's kicking a horse to death, so I can't really... <laughs> <laughs> like a drunk goblin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> okay, excuse me, boys. It is, I, I, I'm just trying to keep to my quota so that Steve's happy. My sister says that Mummy killed her, but Mummy says I don't have a sister. There's a really horrible joke to make there about somebody that went missing a long time ago, but I'm better than that, and I wouldn't. You'd be absolutely mad, Ellen, oh. to say a joke like that. <laughs> oh no! Um, I think it's probably more of a scenario of just like the mum being forgetful. Um, and... <laughs> Classic mum. Classic mum. She says just I don't out have here sister. forgetting stuff. No, we fucking do. It's Tiffany. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> oh, no, I left her at nursery. Gotta go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's precisely what I was going to say, Alex. You ruined my punchline, you bitch. Ah, um, shit. Sorry, me. Sorry, Spooky David. Um, should we have... I, I don't actually know how much time I've got left. Um, oh, six minutes. Plenty of time for more spookerific Davids. The last thing I saw was my alarm clock flashing 12.07 before she pushed her long rotting nails through my chest, her other hand muffling my screams. I sat bolt upright, relieved it was only a dream. But as I saw my alarm clock read 12.06, I heard my closet door creak open. Well, if it said 12.06, that would make it lunchtime. You've ever slept, mate. She's just waking you up to tell you you're late for work. All alarm clocks are like 24 hours, surely. 
Mm. Alternatively, it's daylight savings time and the spooky boy is an hour late and he's just woken up to be disappointed. He's just like, what the fuck, man? Mm. Come on. <laughs> Professionals have standards. It's a home invasion, but it's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just it's just Canada twice a week. Yeah, exactly. A burglar. A be- oh, burglar. Burglar. Oh, is that really? Well is that done. It? Is that That's not it, Chief. This one's like a... This 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 one is actually quite worrying, and it's part of the reason why I don't want to be buried when I die. It goes as follows: I can't move, breathe, speak, or hear, and it's so dark all the time. If I knew it would be this lonely, I would have just been cremated instead. Uh huh. See, I'd be really baby. shit at buried that. alive. I- I get distracted really easily, so I'd get distracted from the panic of that and just fall asleep, I reckon. Mm. Ryan Reynolds did a movie where he was buried alive, so whoever's struggling with that, just go watch that film. They bury you with an iPad, don't they? From the DVD player inside your box, yeah. Yeah. Blu-ray. You can be buried with whatever you want, so... Whatever you want. If you get I'd like, like a... to be buried with my friends, you two. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the 33% Majority. I'm your host, Alex Springthorpe. I'm your host, Tom Hutchinson. (laughs) (laughs) The fucking quiet! (laughs) (laughs) And this week, I want to talk about... (laughs) I'm crying. Oh, that's so good. Well, I'm dizzy for that. (sighs) The doctor's told... Oh, no, okay, you're still going. (laughs) (laughs) I actually found another little nugget of laughter juice. Just a little, a tiny little sipping of of comedy That's right up my fucking alley of comedy, that is, you know, just the fucking quiet. (laughs) Just so, so many layers to that comedy gem. Oh, spooky David. (laughs) I like spooky Spooky David. David. Me too. Do you know what? I'm quite enjoying spooky David as well. Um... We, I think we've got time for, for one more, shall we? Always. Yeah, go on. Go on. After struggling desperately to move any part of his paralytic body just to alert the doctors that he was conscious before they made the first incision, he was relieved to see that one of the nurses had noticed his pupils dilating from the bright light. She leaned in close, and in a whisper that tickled his ear, she spoke. These nuts. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, she spoke in a whisper to my paralytic body just before they made the first incision and she whispered These nuts. You think it's we don't canonical. know you're awake? It's I think canonical. That, no, it's I think, these nuts. I think that's these nuts. A- Alex, actually, speaking of that, do you know what? Just to round off this wonderful episode of the 33% majority, can you just walk the guys, uh, the, the audience through what happened in our in our text conversation the other day? Welcome back to the everybody's favourite episode of the 33% majority. It's the bit where we talk you through some nonsense that happened in our group chat that you weren't there for. So Tom mm. said a while ago, scroll, 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 scroll. Tom messaged, and Tom Tom said in the group chat, how mad is it that we went straight from vinyl records to cassettes and then streaming on, like, Spotify and shit? And Ash said, yeah, pretty mad. And Tom came back, yeah, like, that would be like if we went from VHS to Netflix with no DVDs and shit. And Ash just replied, you know, really playing along with it, not as mad that we went from Jesus to jet planes in 2,000 years. And I, mm-hmm. you know, bro- half an hour later picked up the message, oh, Tom's message. And I was like, oh, hang on, Tommy, you did forget CDs. The Laserdisc was mm-hmm. uh, pretty dope for data conveyance for a while there. Uh, and Tom, w- within, <laughs> uh, let me check the records here, 0.01 seconds replied with a picture of a squirrel pointing to his testicles that says CDs nuts. <laughs> um, and what he'd done yeah. is he'd set... Set both of us up for a good punchline to a joke. Ashley thought it was an interesting topic to discuss. <laughs> I, I had to, uh, well, actually, uh, to Tom, I had a, I had a well, actually, to, to bust him with. Mm. Um, and yeah, it hurt. It was a betrayal. Um, Ash, the next day, message, and we'd been chatting for a while that morning. He just uh, messaged after a, a brief reprieve and said, guys, um, guys, can I vent real quick? And I said, yeah, of course you can, mate. Uh, it's a picture of the little Among Us man dipping <laughs> into a vent, and he just <laughs> said thanks. Uh, Alex, instant, another betrayal, another betrayal. Um, and then 
Tom said, because we always like to kind of prep a little bit for what we're what we're doing, make sure we're not both doing like Reddit segments or whatever. Tom said, um, tonight I'm uh, 100% discussing uh, BOFA, discussing BOFA. And that's my segment, don't steal it. Uh, and Ash replied, oh, how interesting. It's a tough subject. Uh, I imagine they were in cahoots organizing another Alex prank scam. And I was watching this happen. Tom said, no, I think it will be good. I said we have to both get heated. No, we have to not get heated about Bofa. I hate it so much. Even just reading it, it's just Bofa these nuts. Fuck off. Yeah, that's and the you've one. reminded me of the betrayal. I'm done doing a podcast now. What's the end of it? Well, <laughs> this has been a podcast, guys. This has been the 33 percent majority. We hope you liked our anecdotes. We hope you liked the dumb segments we did today. Um, it would be really super appreciated if you could share this on your instagram you know uh share it not even that share Share it share it if every person shared it with one person that would be so helpful one friend just go hey give this a whirl not even your friends Mm -hmm. just go to your go to your grandma's house and set a timer on her yes and make it play it absolutely (laughs) but um we really appreciate the listenership guys um your support has been amazing and, and we really appreciate it so anyway i've been your host Tom Hutchinson. I've been your host, Alex Springthorpe. I've also been uh, a host of some of some variety, uh, Ashley Hall. See you all next week. Bye. 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 <laughs> Every fucking time. <laughs> <laughs>